G'day Fools, I'm Scott Phillips, The Motley Fools Chief Investment Officer, and welcome to one of our favourite YouTube series about one of our favourite things, which are our favourite books. That's right, this series is about one a week, and we take you through the favourite investing books of myself and the investment team here at The Motley Fool. We know that the investors tend to be big readers. You want a sense of what you should read and why, and that's exactly what this series is designed to do. Joining me today is the man who coined the idea, came up with the idea for the series. Not only that, he said he had more than one investment book, so I went from my favourite investment book to our favourite investment books. He is, of course, Andrew Leggett. G'day, mate. How are you? Hey, Scott. Now, you were, you were the person who bought our very first, I can't even say investing book, our very first book that had reference to investing, at least in its implications, and that was Moneyball, of course. If you haven't checked out that episode, just jump on our YouTube channel and in the little YouTube channel search, type in Moneyball. If you're just on the YouTube homepage, try The Motley Fool Australia Moneyball and you'll get that episode. But watch this one first. Uh, but you're back with another book. Now, I'm going to say this time, mate, you're just straight out sucking up with the boss, aren't you? I mean, th this book is Rule Breaker, Rule Makers, Rule Breakers by two blokes called David and Tom Gardner, who happen to be the co-founders, the co-chairman. One of them is the CEO, the other one's the chief rule breaker of a little company we both work for called The Motley Fool. Tell me, this isn't just getting about, about getting a pay rise next, uh, next month or two. No, although that I um, wouldn't say no to that, obviously. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Tom, if you're watching. So, so, you know, I've already put out what, you know, albeit an abstract version, what my favorite <laughs> investing book is. Uh, yep. I would say that this one is arguably one of the most important investing books that I've personally read. Oh, but just like the impact angle, it okay. has had on my approach to investing. Now, okay. I've went through a bunch of iterations as an investor. I, like everyone else, I start from a point yeah, of complete too. ignorance where you know <laughs> you do stuff and hope that it works. You then mm -hmm. kind of start learning more. You go through the the eventual Warren Buffett phase, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and things. And you know, then I went through this value investing kind of you know era. But during that time, mm -hmm. I always felt that there was something that was kind of missing. Now, I'm an investor that likes to, you know bet on companies that are really changing the future. Uh, but at the moment may seem like, you know, I always say like a great growth company is one that looks strange today with when you <laughs> look at what they're doing. But when you, yeah. but when someone looks back at it in 10, 20 years time, they go, that was just obvious. Uh, right, you know, right, right. Yeah, iPhone is an example of this. People yeah. were saying the iPhone yeah. would never catch on, you know, and this didn't kind of mesh well with mm. all of the investing books that I read at the time. And I just always felt like, you know, I think there's more and I think there is a better way for me to personally invest, but mm. I didn't quite have the, you know, an authority on it to kind of say, yeah, mm. you're right. You, this approach exists and it works. Here's a and right, it, right. it wasn't until I kind of read you know, firstly started working at the Motley Fall. Hmm. You know, got to hear hear from more more from uh, both David and Tom Gardner, and and I read this book, and you know, I I can thank this with me making some of the most successful investments that I've ever made because of the framework that this gives. Now, you know, like I said, Moneyball that was a bit of an abstract version, you know, admittedly <laughs> of like you know of how to take that into investing. But this one, I'm yeah. pleased to say, if people can get their hands on it, does okay. give not only hard examples, but mm. you know, step-by-step -step framework on how to do it. So I'm sure that will be much more appreciated than people trying to wonder whether Billy Beans, you know, comments about <laughs> not wearing jeans and how that relates to investing. So. I'm not, I'm not sure I can draw that line. I'm sure you can. Let's go to the book though. So Rule Makers, Rule Breakers, it's called. Uh, book. There's a couple of versions of them I'm looking now. You can get it on at least Google Play. Uh, it's available as an audio book from somewhere. So you can certainly get the copy. You should be able to find a copy. It's on Amazon. There you go. It's on Amazon. Um, talk to us about what, how it kind of supported the thinking that you had. What, what it sort of taught you. What? How, how did the book help you on that transition? Okay, so... The book starts out, it's broken into three sections and it essentially follows, uh, you know, the, the evolution, the life cycle of certain companies. So companies that start off as rule breakers, trying to do something different, 
you know, to help it get ahead in a big market and take on the bigger players. Then it goes mm -hmm. into, you know, what David and Tom refer to as the tweener stage. Now think <laughs> of this as kind of like this midpoint cocoon between it being a caterpillar and a butterfly. And, right. you know, some, some companies are going to come out of that cocoon, some aren't. And then mm -hmm. they obviously go on to the rule, the rule makers, which, you know, pretty self-explanatory. These are the companies that <laughs> you know, own that industry and basically say, this is how things are going to be done. Now, right. you know, a great example I can think of, you know, that probably follows this process is like something like Netflix. It started off as a rule breaker, you know, mm. we're not a big cable company, but we're going to offer this, you know, <laughs> yeah, this right. new service called, you know, streaming video on mm. demand. And we're going to mm. do that really, really well, better than anyone. Like, and we're going to be the first as well, which is as people who read the book will learn is one of David Gardner's key traits of a rule breaker, you know, first mover in a, in a big market. And then as that grows, it kind of now Netflix is the dominant player and mm. people are copying it. So it went from breaking the rules to making them. So that's mm. kind of an example of what this book will take you through and yeah. It's really gelled with me because those are the two areas I've realized over time that I like investing in. I like the ones that are going to, that are kind of small enough and disruptive enough to generate significant returns by taking on and taking a larger and larger share of a market. And I love those ones that, you know, are already the dominant player and are so entrenched that basically you know, in 10, 15 years, they're still going to be performing well. And I could, I could name a bunch of, a bunch of them off the top of my head. So that's kind of how it's, how it's been for me. And obviously someone that's met both, you know, David and Tom and, you know, yes, they are kind of, you know, the founders of, of my employer, but they're also some of the, <laughs> sharpest the investors yeah. that I've ever met. Um, yeah. and their results show that. So these, these are people that despite the fact that, you know, you, um, they're wearing a couple of, uh, jester hats on the front yes. cover, yes. um, you know, they're people that really should be, you should be paying attention to when it comes to investing. Yeah, that's right. I mean, it's, it's a fantastic book. I've read it myself. Tom and David Gardner are sensational investors, of course, individually, um, as, as a couple of brothers as they are too, which is pretty impressive. Uh, and they, they start off with very different styles. The idea of the rule breaker, rule maker was David and Tom Gardner, respectively, uh, when both of them can do so well over long periods of time. And to some degree, uh, you know, it would be unfair to them to say that uh, all of the returns of the office in Motley Fool analysts and services have been their responsibility because they get the good and the bad from that. But that style of investing really has lasted now for well over 20 years. I want to say David bought Amazon shares in 1997, I think I want to say, maybe 98, something like something ridiculous early anyway. Um, at, at, uh, you know, he tells a story about having the, he met Jeff Bezos once and he said he thinks he's the person in the room with the second lowest cost base for his Amazon shares, of course, Jeff Bezos with the lowest. Um, David has held it for a very, very long time. And just a reminder, I think of the power of, as you say, that rule break it a rule maker kind of idea. If you can get that right, um, you've got to hold on. You've got to do some things right. And that's why the book is worth reading. We can never do any book justice just in the short time we have together to talk about the book. But it is a really, really remarkable book. And, and like you, for me, um, quite a formative book in terms of just understanding some of the things that and maybe, maybe it's even, you know, I want to say it's less relevant now. Maybe some of those ideas have actually started catching on. So they were probably more revolutionary when the book was written than they are now, but still a really, really important way to look at it. It strikes me, mate, that rule breakers and rule breakers feels like a dumbbell, it, you know, the kind of um, approach. At one end, you've got the small, innovative, new, maybe risk or probably definitely riskier companies. The other end of the kind of big lumbering goliaths, but are still dominant in their spaces for the right reasons. And the reason I think it's a, it's, it's a, barbell is because the stuff in between can kind of fall through the cracks. I mean, you do need to make that transition from rule breaker to rule maker. So there is, there is some continue, you know, some move along that continuum, but if you're not quite at either end, if you're stuck in the middle for too long, you do run the risk of becoming irrelevant, right? You're neither growing fast enough or innovative enough to make a big difference. You're probably not big enough or, or strong enough to hold your own and to be successful. You can really get lost in between. And maybe that's kind of, rather than feeling like it's two halves of a market, maybe it's the top five and the bottom 5% with not much in between. Maybe that's 
I'll, I'll say for me anyway, that, that's something I took from it. Do, do you have any similar thoughts or different thoughts as to how you view those two strategies kind of put together? Yeah, so obviously, if you get that whole process, you get it from the rule breaker stage and continue to hold it like, you know, David has in your Amazon example, you know, until mm, it's mm. like that rule maker stage, that's yeah. going to be a really successful investment. Now, you know, as we both personally know, and as <laughs> David Gardner himself has said, you know, on his on his own podcast, he also has had a number of big losers. But, mm. you know, the the thing with long term investing is that your you know the the spectrum of results is biased towards mm. you know the upside it you can mm. you can only lose as much as 100% assuming you're not using right. you know any leverage but you can make you know 200 300 400 you know a thousand percent returns yeah. Yeah. when you yeah. get it right so mm. And that's probably been one of my major takeaways from learning more from this book and, you know, this style of investing too, is not to get so caught up on trying to, you know, have a hundred percent strike rate, you know, and get every investment right, because you're not going to, when you try this, you know, when you're trying to invest in rule breakers, you're going to have some that just don't make it or some that offer you know, more promise than what they end up delivering. And you're going to lose money on those. But when you get it right, you're going to, you know, make a lot more money than what you lose. And that's, you know, for someone that gets caught up on, oh my God, this, I have a single investment that's losing money. That's mm -hmm. not going to work for you when you try this approach because it's going to happen. Instead, focus on the portfolio as a whole and make sure that, you know, as a whole, that's, that's heading up. And you have to give it time. And that's the difficult thing. Uh, I don't think what David and Tom put forward in their books is particularly, um, I don't think it's particularly like new and crazy. Like mm. it's pretty common sense. Yeah. Especially even when you dig into da David's uh, rule breaker framework, you know, mm. when you think about it, it's common sense, but it's harder in practice because so many people <laughs> have biases which going back to you know my previous thing of moneyball you know <laughs> that make it hard for them to you know to use this framework which has been proven mm. in the field mm. and and make it work for them there you go fools motley fool rule breakers rule makers the book by david and tom gardner who are our bosses who just sign our checks but uh regardless we actually like the book and i uh, like andrew uh, i was a motley fool member and then uh Join the Motley Fool as an employee subsequent to that. So I can say as a, <laughs> from the outside in as well as from the inside out, a book well and truly worth reading. It is, as Andrew says, not revolutionary and even less so these days, uh, the concepts. But when you actually have to put them into practice and when you do put them into practice, they really can have a, a, a really unusual impact. Maybe, to, frankly, the fact that Andrew, I don't think it's revolutionary is because we've been doing similar things for quite a few years now. Uh, the rest of the market, frankly, doesn't always do that. And so maybe the big lesson here is that if it's not familiar to you, Go on the journey because it can well and truly be worthwhile. There you have it. There's another one of our favorite investing books. We'll be back next week with another one of these episodes. In the meantime, don't forget to like this channel, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell because there's plenty of other content coming, including tomorrow, our stock of the week starring Andrew Leggett. He's back two days in a row, so make sure you check that out. And of course, Stocks in Focus later in the week. Plenty of other great content coming up, including media appearances, a whole lot of other stuff. Um, we're going to make this YouTube channel bigger, better, than, well, it was before, and maybe even bigger and better than anything out there from the Australian finance community. How's that for a boast? Uh, given we haven't done it yet, that's probably pretty uh, ambitious, but we'll do our best to earn that particular epithet. All right, in the meantime, and until next time, on behalf of Andrew and I and the rest of the Motley Fool team, full on. Mm -hmm.